In this video, I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to share your GarageBand projects here in iOS 15 as a song, a ringtone, or even an entire project file. Let's go. Now there's timestamps down in the description, so feel free to jump around. This will also work with iOS 13 and 14, but there have been some minor changes. So there's more videos linked in the description as well if you're using an older version. To share a GarageBand project, open up GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad and then go into your GarageBand for iOS folder. Now there's two ways to do this. You can tap and hold directly on the project file there and hit the share button, or you can hit the select button here in the top right corner, tap on the project file and hit this share button in the bottom left. And you'll get this pop-up where you can share your project as a song file, a plain audio file, a ringtone, so you can use it as an alert tone on your iPhone or iPad, and the project. So if you want to share the entire contents of the project, all the tracks, all the settings, you can do that as well. We're going to cover all three of these right now. Let's start with the song option. If we tap this one, we can export our GarageBand project as a stereo audio file, either an M4A file, which is a compressed file that's used by Apple, similar to an MP3. That's good if you want to just say email this file that's not necessarily having to be high quality. There's also Apple Lossless and then AIF and WAV file. Now I recommend WAV file 44.1 kilohertz 24 bit because it's the best quality that GarageBand can export. If you're using a compressed file you can come down here and add in your information however in a WAV file you can't store that. So we're going to choose a WAV file for this example and hit the share button here in the top right and here we're presented with the standard share sheet here in iOS, meaning we can share directly to an app up the top here. We can share to Mac. Now this used to be called share to iTunes. It's not a recommended process. I don't use it, but you can play around with that if you want. You can open in, which can be handy if you want to bring up some additional apps to be able to open the file in. The one that I use and recommend is save to files. This will actually save it directly to a location on your iPhone or iPad. So let's select that one first. GarageBand is now going to export or mix down your song and prepare it as that way file. Once it's done this, it will ask us where we want to save it in which location here on our iPhone or iPad. There we go. That is done. Now the location is up to you, but I recommend that you store it on your iCloud drive and we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But if we go to iCloud drive, say I want to put this in my studio live today folder, I select that one, I hit the save button and that is saved. That WAV file is saved. Let's jump over to files so I'll show you where it is. Now if you don't have the files app, this one here, you can jump over to the app store and download it. Once you've done that, you can come in here and go to your locations and go to iCloud Drive. And now if we go to that same location we just went to here, Studio Live today, there it is. There's that WAV file. And the beauty of this is we can now use this. We can copy it. We can use it in other apps and it's going to be stored there on our iCloud Drive, meaning it'll be backed up. So we've got a copy here in the cloud and it means if we're using our other devices, we can also access that file. And I'll show more about that a little bit later on as well. One of the other options that's super handy is AirDrop. So if you've got other iOS devices, you can hit the AirDrop button here and you can see I've got my MacBook and I've got my iPhone XS here. So if I want to share to one of those, all I need to do is tap on one of those and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to export it. And then at the other end, it'll ask you on that device what you want to do with it. And here's what it looks like at the other end. You can see I can pop it into any of these apps that I want to. I love Audio Share. It's a very cheap app and it's a great way to manage your audio files. So you can throw it straight in here and there you go. We've got our audio file ready to use. Now, as you can see, there are other ways to share your song file. I use save to files almost all the time because it's the most reliable and the easiest way to manage. However, if you do want to open directly into another app, here's the trick. You can't actually tap up here. It generally won't work. What you want to do is hit the open in button here. This is going to export the song and then pop it up here. And now you can actually select the app. So if we tap on say iMovie, it's going to open up. And if we want to use this in a new movie, we hit create new movie and boom it throws that audio directly in here for us to use in our iMovie project. Let's move on to ringtones. Now I don't use ringtones much but if you create a GarageBand project and you want to have some fun and use it as a custom alert tone on your iPhone or iPad then why not? So let's tap on the ringtone button. Now if your project is longer than 30 seconds you'll get this pop-up saying that it's going to cut it down to just 30 seconds. That's the maximum allowable time in iOS. We're going to hit continue and then it's as simple as naming it 
and hitting export. So we'll leave it as Funk My Brass. Hit the export button there. It's going to export that project, this time not as a song file, but as a ringtone that your iOS, iPhone or iPad will be able to use. There we go. That is successful. Now you can immediately hit the Use Sound As button here and set it up as your standard ringtone, your text tone, or you can even assign it to a contact. If you want to then go and find those ringtones, here's how you do that. The easiest way is just to swipe down and search for, you got it, ringtone and then you can tap straight on ringtone it'll take you straight into your sounds and your ringtones and there they are there's the couple that i've exported as well as all the default ones so it's a bit of fun and it's a way to inject your iphone or ipad with a little bit of personality last but definitely not least is sharing as a project file so this is going to share all of your tracks all of your settings with either someone else or with yourself maybe you want to make a backup copy that's what we're going to show here so we've gone into the share project very similar we've got the same share sheet that we have here. So let's start once again with the save to files option. So we'll tap on save to files. This time it's just going to bring it straight up because it's just going to save that project. Now this can be handy. For instance, I've got this one saved on my iPad, which means it's not backed up. It's just on my iPad location. If I want to say put this onto iCloud Drive so that it will back it up, I can do this. And I highly recommend you have your project stored on your iCloud Drive location. So let's go into GarageBand for iOS. Let's go into my in progress folder here. And what it we save this one into there. So that is done now. If we go over to iCloud Drive now, jump into GarageBand for iOS in progress, this one here, then there it is. And what you'll notice, see this little cloud icon? That means it's uploading. And now it's done. It's uploading to the cloud. So this is now backed up. It means that if I open my iPhone or any other iOS device or even my Mac, I can have access to all of these files. They're saved and they're backed up, which is one of the most important things to do. If you do nothing else with this video, make sure that your garage band projects are saved somewhere that is not just on your device. Once again, we have the airdrop function here. So if you've got another device and you want to send your project quickly from one device to another, you can use the airdrop function. Now, to be honest, I would normally just export it as a file to my iCloud drive, because then you can just go straight to that same location on your other device and download it directly from there. It's a lot easier way to go because you've got one file in one location. So I wouldn't recommend airdropping project files. Just save them to your iCloud drive as we did before before and you'll be good to go. Now, what if you want to share your GarageBand project with other people so that they can collaborate on the same project? We can do that. It's actually super cool. So we'll tap on project again. This is the new option that has replaced the old share with people option that we used to have. It's share file in iCloud. So if we tap on that one, I'll run you through these options because this is where it has changed quite significantly in iOS 15. So as it says, we're sharing a file. We can add people to this iCloud drive file and everyone will see the latest changes, which is very cool. Let's go through some of the share options we have if we tap on this one down here. So we can either allow only people we invite, and there's ways we can invite, I'll show you in a moment, or anyone with the link. Now, obviously, be very careful if you use anyone with the link. That means that anyone that has that link can actually add that file, see the changes, and if you have edit changes here, they can actually make changes as well. So if you just wanted to provide this, so say I wanted to let people see my project, I could go anyone with the link and view only. That means they can't make changes to my project, but they can open it, play it, and view it at their end. If I wanted to collaborate with someone, what I do is go only people I invite and can make changes. And here, we can actually even add whether we want that person to be able to add more people to collaborate on this same project. It's very, very cool. So we'll set that as our options. We'll come back here. And now all you need to do is share it. Now you can use messages or you can use mail or Gmail, any way that you can actually share this out. You can even just copy the link here and that will send it out. Let's just say I wanted to Gmail this. So that's what I use for my email. We'll hit the Gmail button there. And now all I need to do is add people here. Now, Adding people's iCloud email address is pretty important. So make sure that you know the person's email address they use for their Apple account. It'll just make it a lot more seamless. It will work if you add a different email address, but trust me, it's a lot easier. So all you need to do is say, hey, friend, what's your iCloud email address? They give you that. You pop it in here. You hit the continue button. It sends them an invitation. And then boom, you've all got access to this one project. And you can start collaborating and adding tracks. A quick word of warning. If you're working on a project with other people, it's a good idea in my experience to have only one person in a project at a time. If you have multiple people, what can happen is you can have conflicting changes and then you end up with all of these different backup versions of your project. It's not the end of the world, 
but it can make it tricky. So my advice is when you send a project to someone else, say you send it to a drummer, let them go in and add the drums while you're out of the project. And then when they're finished, they can ping you and say, hey, I'm done. You then re-download and open up their changes. You see what's been done and then you can start working on. When you've got multiple people in one project, in my experience, you get a lot of conflicts and it takes a little bit of time to work through those changes. Final bonus pro tip. What if you want to share your project to Google Drive or Dropbox, somewhere outside of the iCloud and the Apple world? Well, you can't just share the project file because GarageBand project files are not compatible with any file system outside of the Apple universe. But there is a very simple way to do this, which I'm going to show you now. To get this done, we need to go back to the Files app. So we're going to flick up here from GarageBand and go into Files. Now, it looks very similar, but there's an additional option in here, which is to zip up a file. So you can zip up one file or multiple files. I recommend doing one zip file per project. To do this, we tap on the select button in the top right corner. We tap on our project and in the bottom right corner, you'll see this more button. If we tap on that one, we've got a compress option. If we tap compress, what it's going to do is create a zip file of that project file. Now this zip file is now compatible with anywhere you like. You can upload it to Dropbox, to Google Drive. You can email it if it's small enough, but generally won't work. So wherever you want to store that, you can even save it to your PC or your Mac or your USB drive. There's a bunch of ways you can actually keep your projects. And I recommend doing that and backing them up in as many places as you can. So even if you got it here on iCloud Drive, create a zip file and back it up. It's also great if you want to send it to someone else and you don't want to use that iCloud infrastructure and have the problems of those multiple videos versions. You can just zip it up, send that zip file. The other person at the other end can unzip it. And to unzip, it's as simple as tapping it again. And there you go. It unzips the project. They can make their changes, rezip it and send it back to you. It's a very convenient way to collaborate and to back up your GarageBand projects.